Welcome back to In and Around North Bay. We're not in the North Bay of California today. We're actually in the greater Los Angeles area because we are stopping first at a restaurant I've always wanted to try, Tom O'Shanter. This is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, continuously operated restaurant in Los Angeles County. Obviously, it's got that history going for it, but it also is known for something else. If you're a Disney dork, you probably have heard that this was Walt Disney's favorite restaurant, that their Burbank studios were not far from here. And they would bring the Imagineers, the animators, they would come here, and a lot of the things that they came up with in the early days of Disney were actually at this restaurant. We're actually gonna sit at their very table. But it's a really beautiful, cool place, even if you're not coming for the Disney history, it just looks like it's from another world. In fact, when you look at it, you kind of get a sense of what Disney was going for when he created some of the Fantasyland type pieces at Disneyland. Lots of history on the walls, way more than I can digest or take in, but it's something that you'll definitely want to explore before you eat your food. It was a Christmas season, so it was beautifully decorated. And right here, they brought us to our table, table 21. This is the table that Walt and his crew would always sit at. In fact, there's a little plaque. There are some carvings in the table as well. So if you're a big Disney dork like I am and my family are, I mean, this was just a huge treat to be able to sit right where Walt and the Imagineers were. They came up with things like Snow White at this very table. And the food's really good as well. It's kind of traditional old pub fare. I mean, it's something like this, our roast beef sandwich that's served with pickles, slaw, and beets. It looks a bit old school, and it is. And it was really good. It definitely was not cheap, but you know, if you're gonna come to this restaurant here, you're gonna try it out. And that's a kid's meal right there. So it's definitely a lot of food. You're not going to leave hungry from Tom O'Shanter's. And then we want to hit up another place that's nearby in Burbank. This is the Autry Museum of the American West. Um, Gene Autry was a very famous uh, country singer and actor. And this museum is really to celebrate the culture of the West, both people coming westward as well as the indigenous people that were here. Unfortunately, when we went, a lot of the wings were closed. It looks like they're doing some major renovations, setting up some new exhibits. But even though maybe half of it was closed, there's still a whole lot to see, a whole lot of history right here in this one spot. And especially if you're interested in kind of local history of Los Angeles, of Southern California, there are a lot of fine details here that's gonna leave you with a greater appreciation for the surrounding area. Water is a big issue in California, and I love the exhibit that they had about salmon fishing, about water rights, about dams. All of that is something that we talk about a lot here in California. It was good that they gave that justice. They also had a whole bunch of stuff that had to do with westward expansion, people moving in here in the 1800s, in the 1900s, lots of tools, weapons, clothing. And in fact, I really love when they do something like this, where they create a bit of a small little neighborhood. As you walk through, you get to see what was life like 100, 120 years ago. Pretty cool. I forgot to mention that the Autry Museum, like a lot of the museums we show here, is part of the North American Reciprocal Pass. So if you got that pass, you get in for free. As is this next museum. This is the Neon Museum that's in Glendale, California, not far from Burbank. Very small museum, but really well curated, had some great staff. They do a great job of not just showing you a bunch of cool neon signs that probably were just gonna be in the dustbin somewhere, but they also give you a little bit about the history of how this went from being a cutting edge technology to something that was seen as kind of out of date and old fashioned and now back in vogue again with people who are retro minded. And just being able to see so many of these things in one room, just the, the glow, that buzzing sound that neon makes, ah, it just felt great. Thank you. 
And just right down the street from the Neon Museum is this really pretty new urban kind of community. Some people hate these things. As an urbanist myself, I like to see any place where it gets people walking and kind of engaging with their local community. It was really set up beautifully for Christmas, a giant tree, lots of people walking around. We had some Korean fried chicken and said, you know what? That's pretty good for today. So until next time, everyone, take care.